This is where we spill the tea. I mean, we're here. We're on the Jones Beach Boardwalk. Oh Dee Snyder's God. calling it. Wrap it up. We've been hanging out with the hot teas. The hot teas, by the way, are amaze. Hashtag Long, Long Island, Island Life. Life. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, so Sharon, I'm really excited to have my friend Lori Rothschild here um, on the podcast. And uh, I I mean, you, she was kind of famous when I first met her, but now she's like super famous. Super famous. We have a celeb. Yeah. I know. <laughs> and best of all, Long Island girl. Long Island. And so she agreed to come on the pod and talk about Long Island and all of her great successes. We talked about it last uh, week when we were teasing that you were coming on. Are you originally from Babylon? North Babylon. North Babylon. So I'm originally yes. from West Babylon. So. Oh, yeah. oh, what year did you graduate? 2000. Oh, Jesus Christ. I know, I know, I know. This is my life. This is my life. I'm surrounded by like, you know, millennials. Um, I'm not even having that conversation. <laughs> I know. I'm touching that. But so I have to tell, Lori and I have to tell you, like the night we met, I was trying to think, I want to say, because I, my daughter, it was like 2008. So it was almost like 18 years ago. Mm-hmm. And oh. isn't that so horrible? I know. Um, she's laughing, but we were at a, a public relations, uh, travel and tourism convention in Pittsburgh of all places. And somehow Lori was there as a speaker mm-hmm. and it's weird what I remember about you. Cause you were on this food panel. Um, and at the time you were the producer for Samantha Brown's travel show. Yes, I was, uh-huh. which you were a total celeb back then. Cause Samantha Brown was like, she is like mm-hmm. the, the goddess of travel, right. On television. And so Lori was like this big VIP at the conference and I was on the board. I think I was actually the chair. I don't know if I was the chairperson that year anyway. So I got to like, hang out with Lori and you know what I remember mm-hmm. is, yeah. The, <laughs> one of the first things I remember about you and I had never even heard of long Island at the time, right. It would never even cross my <laughs> mind. Um, but there was a food panel and it was like, uh, if you were in a desert Island, what, would you want as your food? And everybody was talking. Then Lori goes, uh, tomato mozzarella. Yeah. And I was like, um, I think you mean mozzarella. <laughs> Is that what that are you saying mozzarella? And what she's like, saying? she's like, girl, mozzarella. mozzarella. <laughs> and she <laughs> say, say how you say it, Lori. Use your mozzarella. Mozzarella. It's mozzarella. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and immediately I'm that's mozzarella. how you know. Yeah, you New Yorker. New Yorker. <laughs> and we hit it off. And then we were at the Pittsburgh Pirates game for an event that night. And as we were leaving, we had like a suite for like the board. As we were leaving, we passed this musical venue, this band playing for like the club. And it was called, remember the name, Lori? I do. What was it? Do you? Yeah. It's epic. It was Bon Journey. (laughs) (laughs) Bon Journey. And at the time it was the world's only Bon Jovi Journey duo band, duo it. tribute band. They play here on Long Island. A I lot. know. I've seen yeah. them since. Yeah. They have made quite a name for themselves. And every time someone says Bon Jovi, like, <laughs> I know bon <laughs> you're like, Journey. let me That's tell you about Bon Journey. Girl. So That's Lori girl. and I became immediate best friends. Of course. Danced all night long to Bon Journey and had a whole story. Do you remember the guy's girlfriend prancing around? Because they were not an attra- they were not attractive okay. band members, but they had like drop dead model gorgeous girlfriends. Yeah, they always do. And Lori and I are like, what is happening in Pittsburgh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what 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 is this scene? <laughs> we were right. it was amazing. Immediate so friends funny. forever, awesome. right? I love it. And then it was interesting. Yeah, I've been following. It. Yeah, and we were just friends. And then I followed your career as you like you know, left the, the travel show and went to a, your, your own company, your own production company. Incredible. Oh, no. I mean, I, um, I actually wasn't living on Long Island at the time I had, um, I went to uh, university of Buffalo. Um, I love Buffalo. I say that because it's so freaking cold there, but, um, mm-hmm. um, but I did, but then I moved to, I was living in DC when that infamous night happened. I was working for discovery, which was based in, uh, Bethesda, Maryland at the time. And so I, um, in 2000, I was with Travel Channel for many years. I um, produced a lot of those travel, great big travel shows and traveled the world for free on, you know, Productions Dime. It was an extraordinary adventure. And then um, I got the opportunity in 2010 to um, run development for an international production company that was, that was opening an office in Los Angeles. And I remember going to my husband, my husband's not from Long Island and he 
claims to be Italian, Bergol, and anybody from Long Island, any good Italian knows what Bergol is, but he didn't, so I wasn't convinced he's Italian, but it doesn't matter, that's a, that's an aside. <laughs> he, um, his whole family is, is based in D.C., big Italian family, so I never thought that he would be open to moving cross country, because, you know, we would be leaving the family behind, but um, he did. He, he said, yeah, you know, this, is, this is important for your career, let's do it. So we ended up uh, moving to Los Angeles in 2010, and I was running development for that um, that production company, and then another production company called LMNO TV, which really um, got me started in the true crime world. That's where my true crime chops started was at LMNO, and then I opened up my own. I started. I I I was selling a lot of television for that company. Ideas I pitched ideas to networks, and then obviously you know, you, you create shows from there. But I, I was realizing at the time that why am I doing this for somebody else? That moment happened. And I'm like, oh, I guess I'm opening my own company. So I did that back in 2016. And now Big City is, yeah, it's a, it's a thriving production company, but we're very well known. I always say I'm very well known in the production world for true crime and TLC shows. So big families, um little people the little couple the little johnstons and so i went from travel to murder and little people yeah. and tlc shows which i love yeah. and Lori, i was i often you know that i've said your name a lot since i moved to long island which was seven years ago and you know i was in arizona and i um brought my two daughters to long island who were in third grade and sixth grade and um, we had sight unseen, didn't know anything about it, didn't know anyone. And Long Island is not the easiest place for someone to acclimate to. And um, and I moved here, especially of course, from the desert, especially like, from the desert. Know, I was going to yeah, say, so I, I, I moved here like weeks before, like a huge blizzard. Yeah. Um, and I, and this organization was um, like in a completely different situation. Mm -hmm. And Sharon was here, thank God, because she's seen it go through all these iterations. And I would say all the time, I'm like, I've got to call my friend Lori. I need a reality show of what is oh, happening yeah. right here. We talked about you all the time seven <laughs> years ago. Like she's like, she's going to come. This is I was like, I've got to call. And I, <laughs> I can't believe some of the things that are taking place. To me, it was like such a, a fish out of water. And mm -hmm. it was so hilarious. And I always had like ridiculous questions about living in New York and yeah, exactly. conversations and the accent. You know, oh, I'm like, what do you, so when they're like, it's in the draw. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what you're saying. It's uh, in the draw. Yeah. It's in the draw. Yeah. and she's she's like drawer? i'm gonna draw what jar drawer, drawer i get yeah i get made fun of a lot still it's not about in new york um years you Long know time, and i think yeah. but you said i think it stays in, with you no matter what yeah right? like, i went to new york always a new yorker if i'm talking to you if i'm talking to my mother mm -hmm. it comes out but if i'm in another room like i can i can i, I think i can meld a little bit i can mesh but yeah and DC, and then it was weird. It was like home. They said things like home, which is strange to me. I was like, me home. And, uh, but here I get made fun, made fun of mostly for like coffee. I still say coffee and I still say hot dog. Hot dog. Hot. What about strawberry? Like people say strawberry. Strawberry. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like strawberry. Because. I'll say because. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I asked. Or just like even shorten it to cuz. <laughs> Cuz. Yeah. Just yeah. Cause. But your daughters are like LA girls, right? So they, they're probably like, ma. <laughs> what is that right so so I am really 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 lucky in that I have um you know I, I, my first child was born in on the east coast so so um so you know for the production my I have a transgender team so I actually have a son now I have a son and a daughter um, so, uh, my oldest is Ethan and he is 16. He was born in Silver Spring, Maryland. So he's an East Coast star, but Faith, um, my little one is the only Californian. So she had the know-it-all when it comes to your accent, you know, is not, is not proper. So, but I'll send you, uh, like I said, I, I had this great conversation with her this morning about accents and she knows coming on this podcast and, and she's like, and I said, well, at least no one's going to make fun of my accent this morning when I do this. And, and she, go, and she, and she got into the whole thing about, and I'll send you, I'll send you a snippet because I recorded her. I yeah. That. I want that you recorded her yeah. saying that. I love it. So awesome. I want to see it because yeah. my uh, daughter's just, you know, I don't know if you saw my, um, my Instagram last week, but I went and saw my daughter at Arizona state. Mm -hmm. And I literally had to take her a dozen bagels. 
from Long oh, Island. Yes. <laughs> so my whole, I had to check my suitcase because I had bagels. So She's funny. like a total Long Island girl now. You know, that's um, what my mom used to do that all the time. Anytime she brought, even in Buffalo, you can't get good bagels in Buffalo. I don't care. It's yeah. New York. It's not yeah. the same. No, it's not the so, same. You know, it's the water, right? It's so, the water. water. I know. Water. We say that all the time. Yeah. Um, But yeah, you're- You've gotten really famous as of late uh, with your new project and, um, and, and mostly because a it's true crime, which is awesome. And that's like such a, such a pop culture thing right now. Everyone asks us when it, when, when Sharon and I are like, we have a podcast, we're like, oh, is it true crime? Yeah, I'm like, I mean, it could be we're on Long Island. Let's be right? honest. Um, But no, Um, but yours is, and that's such a hot topic right now. And then of course, you're producing it with the host, um, Kim Kardashian, mm-hmm. which shines a little bit of attention <laughs> on the subject. So I love the story yeah. about yeah. how you um, got together with Kim, because yeah. it's also one of our other favorite shows. There's like this funny synergy here, but it's, you know, it's funny. I always tell Sharon, I'll speak at events all the time on Long Island, like rotaries and whatever. And sometimes there's a handful of people there and people are like, oh, that was a waste of time. I'm like, you never know who's in the audience and who that person knows. And when I heard your story, I was like, this is an exact example. So tell us how your podcast, tell us about it and how it came to life. I just have to tell you real quick. I like literally am obsessed with it. I, okay. <laughs> Kristen is like, it's, it is, it's so good. I came in, I'm like, you gotta listen. It's so good. Thank you. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, You know, I was at the time of, um, when I first started on Kevin's case, it was 2000, late 2016, early 2017. And my company was actually funded by Fremantle, which is a, a huge production studio that really does a whole lot of game shows. They do a lot of game shows. So like American Idol was in the building. Um, America's Got Talent, anything from that to Wheel of Fortune and, um, and uh, you know, um, Family Feud. So I was the true crime author arm company that does game shows so I was like the lunatic like the the back room kind of people they were like I don't know what she's doing about there but she's talking murder all the time so in my office when I first started doing um wrongful conviction Kevin was the first case I had ever I had ever even considered I I do true crime but majority of the true crime I was doing was for networks like ID and Oxygen which were you know, really like love letters to the police. I mean, those those shows really are about adjudicated cases. They've already gone through the system. We already know who the killer is, and he or her has been or she she's they're they're away. They're they're they are safely uh you know we live a killer and they are they were sentenced to prison and we know that that's correct, right? So those cases really are about this tragic moment, the family's plight to find the killer the good guys come in, the, the investigators come in and a killer and, a, you know, we get justice. The killer is caught I'm telling those stories. But one of the, one of my contacts sent me this link for this. Oh, do you know that, you know, the Kevin Keats story out of Ohio? And I was like, I have no idea. And I remember her saying it was a, they think it's a wrongful conviction case. And I remember in my brain going, everyone who's been convicted of murder says they're innocent. Right. And my brain back in 2016, 2017. And she must have sent that link to my email like four times before I actually clicked on it, because it just so happened on that day that I had a free opening. You know, you know how it is when you're so busy. It's like those are the ones they are not it's not the priority. And I, it wasn't a priority for me. And I can I read this uh, incredible news story about Charles Keith, which is Kevin's brother. And um, I was hooked. I was hooked right away. And I called Charles. And I remember when I called him and I said, hey, I'm Lori Rothschild. I'm a television producer from Los Angeles. He literally stopped. It was, it was stone cold silence. And he started to cry. And he said, I've been waiting for all my entire life, um, which really hit me. And so anyway, I became this investigator, if you would, um, working with Charles and trying to understand the story that he was telling me. And my my office was crazy. Like I, I was that woman who had the cork boards with the strings and the picture. And you can see actually, oh, we're, on, we're on Zoom. So you can actually see right over here. This is one of our charts that um, I have never, I, I, I keep it there. So I know where it is, but 
It, I was a lunatic. I literally was the lunatic in a big building full of game shows. So these people would walk past my and be like, and they'd kind of peek in and be like, what are you doing? Um, there was one guy who um, who came in and said just that, like, what, what the hell are you doing in here? And I said, oh, you know, it's a wrongful conviction case. And he would stop in from time to time and, and learn more about the case. And one day he came in and I knew he worked on Family Feud. And he said, um, you know, I'm actually, I wanted to stop in because, I mean, by the way, I was talking to a lot, this, at this point of the, of my investigation, um, we had gone public. We had um, the legal team that's, um, Kevin's legal team in Ohio was actually going for um, a habeas corpus through the uh, Supreme Court. So um, we were trying to make noise that way so that we thought we could affect that case, obviously. And um, so we were doing rallies and, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So we were talking to a whole lot of different celebrities, anyone from, you know, Meek Mill, T.I. to um, Jay-Z. I mean, we're, talk we're talking to everyone. And I figure, and Mary J. Blige, just figuring out who would be the right face for this case, because that's what you needed, especially after the Adnan Syed case was so big for serial. Um, and so he came in and he knew I was talking to all these other people. And he said to me, Listen, we're doing this episode of the Kardashians and the Gen uh, the Jenners, I think it was, or the Kardashians. Would you could, would you want me to say anything to Kim Kardashian because she's going to be there? And I was like, Yeah, sure, <laughs> of course. Yeah. Why are I saying no? Yeah. Um, and I know this sounds really bougie, but this is like how LA is. Like I live maybe five minutes from Kim, like literally around. Michael just died. Uh, I know it's Michael, glacial. who Michael, who's obsessed with Kim K just like oh. died a small, he just died a small death. <laughs> oh yeah. She lives like literally, like we, I literally like five minutes. So for me, the Kardashians and the, I live in Calabasas. So uh, the Kardashians in Calabasas is like, oh, you see my house. You see me. It, it's. Mm -hmm kind of one of those, uh, you know, a supermarket, but, or the farmer's market, or your kids might go to preschool with, with one of the, whatever, right? It happens. So, and that's normal because it's Calabasas. It's, it's kind of like, that's LA. Um, but anyway, so I, Kim was always on my radar because I knew she had done amazing work on the Alice Johnson case. Her heart was sort of already part of the wrongful conviction world. And I knew that she was, you know, kind of aware of all, to all of this. Um, but I didn't think about it. I was like, sure. Yeah. Just go ahead and tell, like, you know, like it's going to work. He's a producer on the family feud. What the hell? Yeah. Is he <laughs> yeah. So She's gonna be like, what? Yeah. Oh, wait, this is the best part of the story. I'm so glad we got here. Okay. Um. So on a Friday night, by the way, you should know, and I don't know if it's still a Long Island thing, but on Friday nights, it's always pizza and a movie in my house. Yep. So it's always pizza. It's always Friday night pizza. Um, And it's for Advent, right? It's like, it's always, it's always, it's always something about, no, either that's usually for me, it's either Easter or it's for, you know, Christmas. It's mm. like we do pizza on Fridays. But anyway, um, I was probably, and by the way, when with, with pizza comes red wine. So I was probably somewhere about a bottle in because it was late. <laughs> oh, um, this is why we're friends. Can you tell? <laughs> yeah. And I want to literally, literally. <laughs> yeah, I was, and I, you know, listen, I no judgments for anybody, but it was Friday night and I don't care. And I was in my own house, but so anyway, I was a bottle in for sure. And then my kids were asleep. Um, and for some reason, I don't remember my husband being in the room, but the phone rings and it's a block number, which I don't even know why I picked it up, but I did. And it was this girl who worked for Kim and I thought I was being primed for a second and she goes, hi, you know, this is Tracy. I work with Kim Kardashian. I'm so sorry to be calling this late, but, um, you know, Kim wants to talk to you about the Kevin Keith case. And I'm literally slapping myself in the face at this point. Cause I'm like, you pull it get together, you, you have to pull it together. <laughs> like, this is not going to work. It's not going to end well. Right. Yeah. So we have this whole conversation and she invites me, you know, she knows that I, um, I, I think I said, I, you know, I'm in Calabasas. She's like, great. I was like, I can just come to the office or I can come to Kim's house. And she's like, just come over to Kim's house on like the following week and, and, and we'll have a meeting. Awesome. So I hang up the phone and I run into my son's room. Who's at the time, probably 12 or something like that. I'm like, wake up. You have no idea what just happened. Like I had to like no proof that I had just had this phone call kind of thing happen. Um, 
which was hilarious. And she, and he was just like, mom, like get yourself together, you know, like get it together. Mm -hmm. So weird. Yeah. (laughs) The the kids don't get it. Like the kids are like, okay, cool. Although my, my kids would die. If I, if I came in, they're dying that I'm talking to you. They're like, oh my God, she works with Kim. (laughs) (laughs) That's so funny. I I think it's the LA thing. It wears off on the kids. Like they don't, yeah, they don't do that. Go to preschool together. Who, you know, go to preschool, like, right. Like Britney Spears kids grew up through here and, you know, we see, we we're very used to, um, it's sad in a way. I, I guess it's not sad. I think it's, I think it's, it, it humanizes Hollywood mm-hmm. a little bit that they're just like us, they're normal and they can go to the supermarket. Although I guess they don't go to the super. I don't know, whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so, anyway, that's how it happened. I went over to Kim's house and I brought my big white binder. As I um, said, I, I, I sound like a true lunatic when I what if you if you see the binder, it makes me look like a real lunatic. But um, but I did. I went over and sat with her, and um, we went through it. And I think I think for Kim, um, obviously it's a terrible case, and it's really it's 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 just it's so pure that there were so many mistakes that were made and and issues with the case, and 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 quite obviously to me anyway, um, police corruption that um that's what i knew she was gonna be you know sort of understanding but i think that the story of charles keith you know a sibling who never gave up on his brother even when all everything was against them i had i I mean everything but he literally gave up his whole life for his brother and to this day you know that's all he talks about so i knew that that was going to be something that really resonated with kim and and you know based on her you know and yeah, the sibling love. And I, and when you listen, like we, all you have to do, it's called, again, it's on Spotify. It's called the system. All you have to do is listen to the first episode. Okay. okay? Literally you listen to one episode and, and, um, Alyssa and I are huge serial fans. We've been talking about it because Adnan Saeed has been in the news lately because guess what? His conviction was finally overturned. Mm-hmm. And that yeah. was what, uh, serial was, you know, what, seven, Instagram. eight years ago. Yeah, exactly. And so it took that long to get that done. And it was done so well that we were obsessed, obsessed with that. But when you listen to Kim and she talks about, she was pitched on stuff all the time. Yeah. She was pitched on, you know, people wanting her help and wanting her platform um, ever since she was successful with the first lady. And it was the lady whose name was Alice. Was that it? Alice Johnson? Yeah. Yeah. And Alice, which I had heard about, you know, you hear snippets, but Alice was a woman. And I loved hearing Kim say this because uh, Alice was a woman who, was convicted um, on a first time drug charge, first time ever drug charge and um, like life in prison. And and Kim was like, you know, I just found it really incredible. This woman with no criminal history, first time charge, got the same exact mm-hmm. sentence as Charles Manson. Mm-hmm. So something's wrong with that, <laughs> you know? But she was pitched yeah. on everything since. And, but it was your uh, case that maybe because of the sibling, maybe because of the evidence, she read it and immediately was taken in. Yeah. Yeah. I do think it was the Charles Keith story. I mean, I always like to say that. I I mean, I like to think that I can pitch a good show, but, um, you know, a good story that is part of what I do. But, um, even, you know, I always say this case is way bigger than all of us. It's, it's way bigger. Um, it's, it's an important example of just how wrong our criminal justice system is because each, there were so many times that it failed, to result in, in, you know, Kevin's being convicted of this crime. And not only that sentenced to the death penalty, um, you know, it's a really stunning example of how many things can go wrong. And if you really think about um, his case, it was the manipulation of the, of the system by the people that knew it. They knew how to work the system in order to, you know, get the result that they wanted. And I firmly believe that. I don't mind saying that because if you were to see, you know, I've, I've done, um, amazing, uh, stories of, of incredible, uh, investigative work from very small police departments all over this country, tiny. My dad was a cop, right? My dad was NYPD, my cousins, NYPD. I mean, I have friends that are, that are Suffolk County and Nassau County cops. So for me, you know, I know that there are many, many good police officers out there. This is not, 
me going after the law enforcement in the, in the least. I've seen major, I've seen, there was this one case I always reference. It's, um, I forget where it was. It was kind of like Alabama. It was a small town um, police department. I think they had six officers total in their entire department. <laughs> and there was a horrific crime that happened where a girl was um, raped and murdered and her body was actually tied up to a um, baseball fence, like a fence wow. on the baseball field. She was coming home from a party. I think she was like 17 years old. It's, it's a nightmare, so right? Scary. But, but what's incredible about that case is they ended up finding the killer years later. And that's because the original six man, you know, law enforcement team, these, these detectives that have zero resources in these tiny little places, they had the wherewithal to do such great crime scene collection they even clipped the grass under the body and stored it so perfectly that years later they were able to pull DNA and find the real killer. Right. So I know for a fact that there are amazing police officers all over this country doing incredibly difficult work every single day. But in this case, it was so evident that they were doing nothing, like they were doing nothing and that they knew exactly the information to give to make sure that they got the guy that they wanted to get for this case. Yeah. And you know, what? I don't want to give too much of it away because I do want people to listen because you know what okay. I love about your podcast is when you listen to it, it does take you on the journey. It's yeah. not one-sided. It It's not, um, it's not like, Oh, when you're listening to it, you, you, it's going to paint this picture of how he was wrongly convicted because just when you start to think, like, oh yeah, you start to hear what was missed on the police. Then then you hear the the victims identify him and you hear yeah. the guy say, I knew immediately it was him. And so it really does take you on that journey throughout the show that keeps you like guessing both ways. And I really, really commend you and love how you showed both sides and really didn't try to slant it in a way, but just provide the evidence and the facts. So it's a great, it's so entertaining. And you know what I love most? The sound effects. Yeah. Yeah. I love the, the sound parts, effects. Everything. I mean, honestly, Lori, I mean, it's a great story. It's a, it's really an incredible, it's, it's a horrific crime. And, you know, you understand people want justice and victims want justice. And there's so much emotion involved in something like that. It's just an incredible story, but you as the producer behind the scenes, I mean, look, we are in a podcast. Okay. We, I was just doing emails five seconds ago, You're Alyssa, Michael put Zoom. together yeah. things. <laughs> I, oh, you know who I was in a zoom with right before I got on here, Danny O'Donnell, who is a New York state assemblyman, uh, the tourism, um, chair, who's also Rosie O'Donnell's brother. That's just a great long Island story right mm -hmm. there. Right. Great story. Yeah. <laughs> And he's like, let me tell you about Long Island. I'm like, no. Yeah, I think, they're from, I think they're from Comac or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. And yeah. Uh, he was like, oh, it, it, I'm like, you know, and Alyssa like knows, she's like, oh, and you know what else Lori worked on? The uh, true story about the Buttafucos. No. Oh, yeah. Remember that? <laughs> and I'm, I am, I'm still very good friends with Mary Jo. In fact, I just saw Mary Jo and I call him Pauly. The son is Paul and Jessica. We just, they go to our church. So I see- they live here in LA now. It's funny. Wow. How weird is that? Right. Yeah. I used to go to my church. Yeah. <laughs> Alyssa knew them. Alyssa oh, was in dance class with their Jessica daughter. and I were friends yes. when we were kids. Yep. <laughs> oh, you're kidding. Oh yeah. my God. So I grew up in Massapequa. So oh. right, right in that neighborhood. Yeah. Yes. I went to that yeah. beach club. Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. then like, here's another funny story. When we were doing the podcast, we were talking about how um, in 2020, how we're not going to take it should be the theme song <laughs> of 2020. And then like Dee Snyder's like, Hey. I have a Christmas song. Yeah. So he calls in and he lives in LA now too. And it was just like, yeah. it's, such, it's such a funny Long Island, such a great story. Yeah. But my point is this is a lot of work just from time perspective. And I know Alyssa and, you know, Michael do really the majority of the work. Sharon and I get on here and drink wine yeah. and chit chat. Hang out. Um, <laughs> but your podcast is years of research in the making. Well, and the I way love, uh, I love how that what she was talking about the binder, your binder is just many years of the research of this case and Kim's like I just need this just to I need to read it but even the sound effects like here's like and then you hear someone yes. running even and the then you hear like that you hear the, the you hear the typing yes. and it it take it it's like old-fashioned radio I mean it's really like the old-fashioned yeah. radios before mm -hmm. television and it just it literally it 
puts you in the situation. It's so good. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> oh my gosh. You're so kind. I have really great producing partners. Um, there's a company called Tenderfoot TV that's based in Atlanta who, um, Don Albright, uh, Payne Lindsay and Mer Meredith Stedman, they are they are some of the greatest podcast producers. I'm a TV producer. My um my background is just visual, so I've always done televisions, but the audio the audio medium is way different and you know, you really it's such an intimate experience that you put, you know, the listener has this really incredible experience of of I remember listening to Adnan Syed and that was my Serial was my first podcast. It was my first podcast and I remember <laughs> like being stuck in my car, not being able to get out because I wanted to hear what, you know, I wanted to go to the next episode or whatever. I was binging it. But I also remembered that I had images in my head of what everybody looked like without even knowing what they look like. Right. It's like, I didn't. And back then I remembered literally not going online to read anything about it. Cause I didn't want to disrupt that, you know, sort of moment I was having with myself and that entertainment world that I was having. And I, and I envisioned, and we envisioned Kim and I, and, and the entire team really wanted people to sink into the story to, because it is a wrongful conviction. So, so for us, right. And there is a, um, there's a political slant when you say things like that, right. There's always going to be like, oh, well, especially in this world that we live in today, you know, it, it always feels very political. And what we wanted to remind people and, and, and remind ourselves is that at the end of the day, this is a human story. This is about, this is somebody's story that this happened to. I'm not trying to change anybody's mind about how the criminal justice system works. I'm trying to change your mind about what happened to Kevin Keith. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I think that that's the reason why when you say, um, you know, even the sound effects or, you know, hearing Damon uh, Chapman, who is the uh, victim's brother, or, um, you know, even having conflicting ideas. I, I still had a hard time with the car that, you know, Kevin's girlfriend had the, that the car's um, tires changed. It, that bothered me, it bothered me for a really long time. It's like, it's, and even Kim, Kim had this really great moment where I know people are still listening to it and I'm not giving mu much away, but um, the getaway car has a, uh, has a three digit, um, is three digits in it that was when the when the killer sort of sped away he smashed into a snowbank and left an imprint of that license plate in the snow and they they were able to see a 043 from castings they could get that that was a partial license plate number and i remember when uh i told kim that kevin's girlfriend not his fiance his girlfriend which is always it's always like a oi um <laughs> Right. Uh, she, I said, yeah, his girlfriend's grandfather had a zero four three in his license plate. And that's what they they honed in on. It was the wrong color car and a car he didn't have access to, but it had a zero four three. And I remember Kim going, what kind of bad luck do you have I to know. have when your side chick has a grandfather? <laughs> right. Zero four three. It was funny. <laughs> I was love you. I love how your accent comes out there. No, it, it's really a riveting story. And um, and we're not, I'm not done with it. So, know. you know, like I'm not going to say, yeah, so I'm excited and it's, uh, everybody should listen. It's the system it's on Spotify. It's only on Spotify. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's really an incredible story to listen to. And I think Kim does a great job and I really respect her for using. And I like how you talk about how she uses her platform and her voice for something good and what an incredible thing for her to do and it's just amazing that like like from bon journey to kim kardashian like how, i'm like oh i know people just so you know <laughs> i got a girl like here on long island we always like got a guy but i got a, I got a I girl. got a, i got a guy yeah i got a guy yeah okay. and yeah. um so real quick rapid fire do you ever come back to long island when's the last time you've been here to see your family is your family still here um, I have extended family there. My immediate family are, are all off of Long Island. Um, my best friends and, and I have some family that are there. I was just there last, in fact, a year ago now. Oh no. Right before Halloween, I was there last year for my, um, high school reunion. We, Ooh. Uh, yeah, it was like one of those, like, let's all meet at a bar. It wasn't official, mm -hmm. but it was like totally, you know what I mean? In Babylon mm -hmm. village, it was, it was great. And it was fun to see everybody. And, um, and then 
Um, I went to, I went out and did my wine tastings out, out on Long Island. I don't, I, I'm not plugging. I'm just saying it. Yeah. Was, no, you uh, can plug that we're sponsored by Long Island wine. So uh, was, what's and, your favorite winery? Where'd you go? I think we went to Pindar yeah. and we went to, um, we went apple picking at this beautiful, I forgot what it was called, but it was such a beautiful day. And they had like all different types of, they had all uh, of the wineries, a couple of the wineries, I would say, had like booths and stuff. So we were, we were hammered picking wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, okay. So what do you, is there any, what else other than the vineyards and the apple picking, which is amazing. And I love that you can go anywhere and apple pick or pumpkin pick, or we're we'll almost, back I was like, so yeah, we're almost in the part where you can cut your tree yeah. down, mm -hmm. you know, your Christmas tree. Um, yeah. But yeah. do you miss any, like, are there any favorite restaurants or, you know, what do you miss? Oh my God. You know, there's like so many things. I think, you know, the biggest thing I miss is a diner. Mm -hmm. I, we don't have diners. You yeah. Know? It's we such don't, a Long Island thing to have diners, right? Yeah. And you have your own diner, right? It's like, yeah. I know my diners, like based on so what So Lori, when I moved here, I was like, why are there so many diners? And, and like, again, everybody right? wanted to meet me in a diner. I'm like, Sharon, yeah. why? What? Yes. What? And then, but every single person was like, you haven't been to the Plainview Diner. Yeah. You oh haven't God, been to the Hot Pocket Diner. You, that's that's they're like no, that's the diner. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that's the that's some North Snor North North Shore uh, Shore snobs right there. When they say, <laughs> yeah. Plainview Diner. You know, we went. I was like more of like the um the Olympic Diner, the Olympic which, Diner, oh, on yes. GPA, right? Yeah, on, the, on Deer Park Avenue. That's yeah. exactly right. That's where yeah. I grew up. And I used to work. Nice. I used to work at the McDonald's over there. Um, when oh I was my God. the North Babylon McDonald's you used to work yeah. there. Oh, that's iconic. I love that. Yeah. I, I've been and there too many times. I used to, I used to cruise the Avenue in my, in my, yeah. red, Camaro, in my red Camaro. I love it. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's our, that's our blessing genre. Bon Jovi. Yeah. Blessing Bon Jovi. That's our era. I remember I, my Holy mom, bon um, my mom went out of town one time, my senior year and I had a huge party and the neighbors, of course, all immediately told on me. And they told her it was like a Camaro convention. Oh my God. That's like, so funny. Yeah. Okay. You knew I was in the convention market even back then, back but then. I was. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, I'm trying to think like, I, I mean, I miss normal pizzeria. Like, of course, I mean, th these are normal things. Bagels on Sundays are really, that's really hard to come by. Um, there's a lot of like, like, you know, restaurants probably that are gone by now that are, that are not there <laughs> that, um, I grew up with, but what about like the Rockefeller tree? Did you go see the Rockefeller tree every year being close to the city? No, no. See long Islanders don't do that. that like, version. like, yeah, everyone's I mean, like, I no. do. listen, I do. I, I, we did. We always used to go like right after Thanksgiving, we'd mm -hmm. hop on the LIR and go into Manhattan and do a day in the city shopping and this and the tree. Right. It was like a right. thing. But it's always like cold and, and annoying and not, you know, I like now that I come into the city, I can, I can, it's either I go to the city or I go to Long Island. I don't, I very rarely will do both. In fact, I was just, last year was the first time I was like, oh my God, I'm on the train to Seaford. Like, I can't believe it. <laughs> so did you hear that the Long Island Railroad is now going to connect directly to Grand Central? Why? For the first time ever. You can that Grand Station or Grand Central. It's it's been 20 years in the making at construction. So it's called Grand Central Madison. So now you can go direct and vice versa. You don't have to yeah. go across town. Yeah, that's yeah. great. It's pretty yeah, cool. That's great. No, that I is. Just, I, mean, great. I just got an email from or a text from my daughter today at Arizona State, and she's like, um, okay, here's the day all my roommates are oh, oh. what happened? My microphone just cut out. So did my earphones. I can hear everything you. stopped. Can you hear this us? Thing just shut off, even though it's plugged. I can hear you. Oh, Alyssa's freaking it. It kind of you know. hold up. Hold on. <laughs> and then we'll let you go in a minute. But I was just like, okay. I'm totally no. fine. Don't worry. I I booked, I booked time, so don't worry. Okay. And I worked nope. from home yeah. today. Oh, so that... well, She's like, calm down. <laughs> can you still hear us? Yeah, hold on. Perfect. She should be able to hear us, yeah. but um. Oh, there we go. Okay. 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 Got it. Yeah. Okay. Ready, Alyssa? Mm -hmm. All right. What what else is the rapid fire? What else? Okay. Is the okay. The rapid fire. fire. Uh. So what else do you want to know? Uh, what? Okay. So your favorite Long Island musician? Because there's a lot oh. of them. Come on, it's Billy, Billy Joel. Joel. <laughs> <I know. laughs> but Mariah Carey. This is Mariah Carey time. You're right, and I am a huge, as you know, a huge Mariah Carey. I'm, I'm a huge Mariah Carey fan. I mean, I've gone to many, many concerts, but. I don't know. Like for me, like you can't say Long Island and not have Billy Joel. And I'm still, I'm still the one that will play it in a bar. You know, I'll yeah. be the one that 
Let's yeah. get in a bar. I don't care. Okay. Um, okay. Favorite beach. Like, oh, I was going to say that. Oh, sorry. Sharon. Oh, Robin Moses feel five. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. That's yes. them. Yeah. That's them. But I like Toby. I like Toby too. I like Toby yeah, Beach. Nice. Too. Yeah, it's Toby really Beach. cute. Okay. Mm-hmm. And did, uh, do you ever come back? You don't ever go to the Hamptons, I guess you're, aren't we're, you're like in the Kardashian clan now. Aren't you like Hamptons crowd now? I mean, I hope not. I, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I mean, no, I'm not. I, um, you know, I like the Hamptons. I go out. I used to, I used to actually camp at Hither Hills, which is, I don't know if that still happens, yep. but mm-hmm. as kids, I used to go with my best friend and her family. And that's the way I love the Hamptons. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I like, I like sleeping on a beach. I like that's I, I I'm a Long Islander. I'm not, I don't pretend by having some big house on Long Island that I'm, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get that. I don't think that's the real Long Island. I think the real Long Island are the fishermen and Captree Boat Basin and, yeah. you know, and having, you know, a clam, a clam roll. I, to me, I just, I, I miss, I think the most, like the ability to, you know, kind of walk next door and know your neighbors. I think that's the one thing that I, I loved about growing up on Long Island is that we kind of, I grew up in a very, um, North Babylon when I grew up was very Italian and, um, Irish and a lot of cops and nurses and things like that. And everybody knew, everybody knew who you were and where you were from. And my kids don't have that. You know, mm-hmm. I wish, I wish that that was still, you know, uh, my best friend lives in Seaford and she has this amazing place where her house, the, the backyard, the, um, the fence behind the fence is her husband's grandmother's over here. The mm-hmm. aunt is over here that this is over here. And like the kids run back and forth to the houses and, you know, as much as people will complain about Long Island and, and taxes and all this other stuff, because, you know, you get what you pay for. I don't care. You're going to pay taxes. You're going to get what you pay for. And I think that's the beauty of living on Long Island is just Mm -hmm. having that immediacy of people that, you know, you trust. You're so right. And we talk about it all the time on the pod and you'll, you'll, uh, Faithful has to, she should listen to when my daughter was on here and talked about how she felt about Long Island being a transplant here. And she said that Long Island could, um, makes you feel like you have a, a childhood, you know? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Which is really that's right. Great. And so, you know, anyway, Long Island loves you. Uh, we're so <laughs> proud of you, honestly. Yeah. And, um, so cool. and, 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 you know, your show is amazing. The system is amazing. And, mm-hmm. and you're, and it's also doing something really important in in someone's life, mm-hmm. which is exciting that you're able to make such an, a, a really um, specific impact on someone's life. Um, but it's also just really wildly entertaining. Yeah. (laughs) You know, like you talked about it before sitting in the car, you didn't want to get out like this morning I'm listening and people kept on coming in my office. I'm like, get out. (laughs) You're like, (laughs) stuff's happening. (laughs) It's happening. So uh, (laughs) check out the system and uh, Lori, you, you, if please, will you come back to Long Island and come see us? Sharon and I yes. also the vineyards. Yeah. Only if I can, only if I can be in studio and drink with you at the same yeah, uh-huh. time. Yes. That's so, required. That's required. And I'm on like the North shore. Oh uh, yeah. That's okay. The North shore is fine. I'm just, she's on the know. South shore. I'm on the North shore. So where, where do you live? I live in Bayshore now. Oh, my grandmother was in Bayshore. Uh, is that mall still there or no? Yeah. Surprisingly, it's like the only standing mall, Bayshore <laughs> mall. other than like the other three. Yeah. Yeah. Cause Massapequa was gone, right? Massapequa was mm-hmm. gone. It's like ghost town. I think it's going to be assisted living or something like yeah. that. They, they leveled it? Not yet, mm-hmm. but it just literally closed probably a couple months ago. Oh my God. That's crazy. I know. Mass Where, do you go shop- Where do you go shopping? Sunrise Mall. Amazon. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to say like downtown. Oh, downtown. And the small business. No, I do. I small businesses. <laughs> it is like, real, it but is. like, but the, what about Smith? Is Smith Haven? Smith Haven's there. Smith yeah. Haven's and Roosevelt. Oh, Roosevelt's still there. Oh, yeah. Roosevelt. And, and there. the outlets, the Deer Park outlets, the Tanger outlets. My kids love oh, yeah. them. They, they're begging me to take them to the outlets, yeah. which are awesome. Deer Park, the Deer Park outlets were not there when I was there. Yeah. And then there's one in Riverhead too, the, the Tanger yeah, and Riverhead. In Riverhead. Yeah. Yeah. And it, they're awesome. But it's funny, like the Deer Park ones, you feel like you're in California. I mean, like everything. Really? How they, like they set it up that way. It's just like, it's, it's just because, no, it's just because it's outdoors. It's all outdoors. Yeah. So long yeah, I was like, like it's like had, California. No, but like the out- way they set it up, they have like this beautiful pond and then, you know. Yeah. Wait, and yeah, wait, yeah. the last thing that you guys should know is that, you know, that I worked my ass off by the way, but at, um, Adventureland, I used Adventureland! to Adventureland! <laughs> True Long Island. Yeah, that's there. right. You commented on that. I got to go uh, be their keynote speaker at Adventureland. Have you seen the movie Adventureland with Ryan? Yes, Reynolds? I did. Of course. Yes. So good. 
My yeah, kids I used to love Adventureland. I used to yeah. run the kids' birthday parties out of the restaurant for the, I think they're the um the Gentilly family. Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. The Gentilly's and the M. God, I, I don't Amoruso. Yeah, I think it, it's still Steve Gentilly that yeah, and, and his daughter, them. Caitlin, or yeah, Caitlin and um oh, Janine. 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 Yeah, sorry, Janine. Jesus. Um they're amazing. Oh my God. Yeah. So Jen Jennifer Gentilly was yeah she was she's my age and I forgot her brother's name but John was the I worked for for John Gentilly when I was there but I I used to run the children's birthday parties there for years and I loved it it was such a fun I mean it was such a hard job for a kid but at the same time it was just it was great I every summer I was at Adventureland so we did it. We did a TikTok a long time ago when it, the trend was "Tell me you're from Long Island without telling me you're from Long Island," and they're like, "I had my yeah. birthday party at Adventureland." <laughs> you know, and everybody knows. Uh, you know, yeah. that's awesome. That's that's really like that's a Long Island staple. So when you come back, we'll take you on a, a nostalgia oh, tour. They have a um a bar now. Oh yeah, you can drink beer now. They have, they have Adventureland beer. beer. Historical. They have a bar at Adventure. Well, it's like they have tavern. Adventure. A yeah, tavern. it's called a tavern. tavern. It's like a little. It's like a little pull up booth <laughs> i don't know if it's not really but the drinks are great yeah but the beer is good <laughs> I'm, I'm not mad at that that's yeah like, she's like i'm down Let's i mean you're busy you're in adventure land you walk by you get a beer yeah. you get yeah. a beer yeah that is fantastic okay yeah. well i have to go i have not been to adventure land in many many years but i did also i went two years to farmingdale so that was oh. right across the street i remember i was there mm-hmm. so yeah. Farmingdale College, amazing. And there's some really great new restaurants and uh, Splish Splash is still here, which I'm sure you, yeah. <laughs> she's smiling. Like- Splish Splash, yes. I was, I remember the inaugural seasons of Splish Splash, yeah. Yes. yes. And oh, uh, it's, it, Long Island is really a special place. And obviously the best thing about Long Island that I can tell you as a transplant is moving here. And we were talking about it earlier in the show is that it's the people, the people mm-hmm. of Long Island, like you were saying, Lori, are so awesome and special. And especially when you come from someplace like Arizona, which Arizona thinks like, I love Arizona my family's still there, but it's, it, they think they're LA, but they're not. So there's a lot of air yeah. kisses, you know, and stuff. But when you come here, people are like, Hey, get out of the, you know, like I always tell the story that I would come Arizona. Everyone's like, you're so amazing. And we love you. You're so great. And then I came here and I did my first speech and I'm like, what do you think? And they were like, you know, you could have cut it down by like so five to seven minutes. Yeah. You know what I mean? you went a little bit long but it was good like and I'm like oh uh, okay I guess I'll cut it down and that's great because that's good feedback that's what you need to know it's you know what it is it's I think and it's I think New York I I think it's New York Long Island I don't know about Buffalo that's a whole other that's how the whole breed of New Yorker but um my take on it is that I would much rather you know what you get from me I'm going to tell you the truth from the from the jump so you, you're going to know it all the time. And it's, to me, it's like, there's a waste of time when you don't tell me what you actually think. I don't know mm-hmm. how I, and I, and I'm only saying that because I've experienced it he, here in California, especially it's um it's a culture of like, it's not that important. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, I don't want to hurt your feelings or, or it's super passive aggressive where they're not going to tell you just because they think they're going to get yeah. one up on you or something. But I think Long Island is a New Yorkers in general. I just don't have the time for it. Like I just mm-hmm. don't have any time. And, you know, if I don't like something, you're going to know it and, and that's it. And I would, I think that that's why we come off of come off in this world as being, you know, kind of bitchy or mm-hmm. mean yep. people, yeah. right. It's like, Oh, New York. direct. Crazy. It's okay right? to be direct. direct. Yeah. Just be direct. And Say isn't that refreshing? Yeah. It's refreshing. Know, <laughs> I think, I think it people, is. I'd rather I, know. Too. I would rather know. I just, yeah. you know, you don't have to bullshit me. I, it's a waste yeah. of my time, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is why she's a Long Island girl. You can yeah. tell um, everyone listen to the system uh, on Spotify. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. I can't wait. Like I'm going to go in, in the, the car. car. We're yeah. driving to Kutchog tonight to the oh, Long Kutchog. Island Harvest Festival, Long Island Wine Harvest Dinner. And uh, we'll be listening the yeah. whole time. <laughs> so Thank congratulations, you. Lori, Thank on all you. of your Thank success. You. I'm so Thank proud you. to be your friend. I'm so thankful I met you that night at the Pittsburgh clubhouse or whatever. And we jammed a bond we journey. Will, we will always have Pittsburgh. <laughs> I know. 
That's and we will always have Long Island, Lori. And yes, and I'll, yes. And, we'll and you have an open invitation. Call Sharon and I anytime. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. Thank you. Tell Kim K we said hi. Yeah. I, I certainly okay. will. All right, okay. Bye. Okay.